Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another Premier Division show. Delighted to welcome JP onto the show. JP, how are you? You well? Hi, all good, Keith. Cheers. Good How's the weather back. up in Derry? Is it sunny? Uh, it was the last couple of days, a wee bit uh, cold outside, but not too not too wet. It's not raining next to us. Good. <laughs> yeah, lucky we've got the sun down here. Anyway, we'll start off, uh, I bet it's sunny in Cork. Anyway, we'll start off at Turner's Cross and finish Cork City 1. Shamrock Rovers nil. Rory Keating's goal with five minutes to go. Uh, gives Cork City look as a fantastic win for them ultimately because it puts them on fifteen points. They're still five points off Drotted, believe it or not, despite that win. So results elsewhere are kind of going against them as results are going for them. But um, I don't think many would have predicted Cork City to win this game. Certainly wouldn't have predicted the events that happened in the game. Um, it would have been a bit mad had Cork City not scored and it was nil nil up against eight men, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, look, obviously a lot of controversy in this game from Shamrock Rovers' point of view. Richie Tell was sent off after 37 minutes. Johnny Kenny was put off second yellow on 61. I think it was on 10 minutes. Um, Sean Horden was put off on 64 minutes. So, you know, from the 65th minute, they, <laughs> they were playing with eight men and at best, at best, they were always going to get a point from the game. But um, look, some Shamrock Rovers fans aren't happy. They're not happy with the referee etc. Um, look, I can understand that. I think some of the refereeing that we might get into some of the decisions in other games as well and the officials, I don't think have been the best this season, it has to be said. I think most people would agree with that. But, I mean, we'll start off with the red cards and for me, the tell red card is a red card. I think Kenny's second yellow is technically a yellow. I think Hors is harsh, personally. Where are you seeing them? Where, what, what do you stand on the decisions? Um... But first of all, whenever I was, I was playing bowls in Belfast and Friday night and came off the bowling green, oh, there it's away again. Um, Came off the bowling green on Friday night and checked my phone and seen that Rovers were down to eight men. At this stage, we're still 20 minutes to go, I think, in the game. And... Um, uh, I couldn't believe it. They had they had three men sent off. Um and just I seen the highlights this morning. Um see I see I seen the highlights this morning and the Richie Toyle one I can't really have an opinion on it because you don't really see what happens. Um there's a scuffle at the back post. Um and you don't really see does he throw a punch, does he throw a kick? It looks um, like me, the, JP. I have cor- talked to a few fans about this, Cork City fans and that, including Gavin, for example. And from what I can see, to be honest, there is definitely, for me, I can see a kick out. Now, we don't know how bad the kick out is, but to be honest, I think that's irrelevant, really. If they think there's a yeah, kick out, yeah. he has to be sent off, doesn't he? If that's the case. Yeah, because it, yeah. it's, um, I think, the, the wording and the, the law is that uh, kicks or attempts to kick his opponent with force or brutality. So he basically has no no arguments there. And I was going to say he hasn't got a leg to stand on. <laughs> because uh, the 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 corner is from the other side, so the line man is looking straight at it. So, mm. um, he's got that right. When I saw the second yellow card game to Johnny Kenny, I thought it was a wee bit harsh. To be fair, um, mm. he does try to pull out of it. Um, he's a, mm. it's probably his first tackle in the game, but because he's on a yellow card, he's only on the pitch five minutes. I think he got a yellow card. Was it for for bad mouth in the? The, yeah. the linesman or something like that. Yeah, he got a um, yellow card five minutes before that, actually. Yeah, yeah. And he, so the referee, if he hadn't, if he hadn't had done what he'd done whilst he was coming on and picked up the yellow card, the referee probably would have let him away with that foul. And that's my just point, JP. Just, just to cut you across quickly there, that's my point. I know some Shamrock Rovers fans are complaining about the officials and that, and I do get it to some degree, especially if you're a fan of that team. I can understand that. But my point is is that Rovers did lose their discipline a bit. Hmm. And hmm. it can lead to that situation. You're right. Maybe Kenny doesn't get the second yellow if they're does, not being I don't think, aggressive not, towards the officials, let's say. Yeah. He, he probably did. If, he just, if he's not being aggressive towards officials and he's ready on the yellow card, Mm. Because I don't think he gets if mm. he just comes on, whatever mm. makes that tackle. The referee probably doesn't even book him. Probably just gives a free kick against him. Has a word, those, the second yellow thinks one of those where it could be a yellow, and you can see why you give it. 
but you can also see why he wouldn't give it. But I feel like the referee was influenced to give it, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think so too. The referee's probably influenced because of what he's done. They they received the the, the mm. yellow card. The mm. Sean Hoare one, I think, was again. I think he's harsh. I think that's harsh. the harsh. I think the trade. harsh. I think it was I harsh. Think. Uh, yeah. I think yes, he's fucked up. But I think mm. he makes contact with the ball rather than rather than the man. So mm. I think if it's anything, it's probably just a free kick because of the high the high foot. Mm. And it's not dangerously high either. If both mm. players have their foot up both for the ball, I think mm. he catches him with the ball, or he catches the ball rather than the man. Also, not only I think, think Crown was booked. Crown got booked yeah. at one point as well. I can't Just remember after Kyle, I think it was. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think yeah. the problem was it's it's a double thing. Like whereas you can see why Rovers fans might complain about the referee, but I think Rovers have influenced the referee to have a bean as bonnet a bit as well. Yeah. Partially. Yeah. And. I think Stephen. I seen the third, the third uh, red card. You can see it in the highlights. The camera zooms in the, and right in front of Stephen Bradley, and he just puts his head, just puts his hand on his head and scratches his head. I think he, he takes Neil Farouja off in a few minutes later because he knows he's on the yellow card. Um, but I think another gripe that's getting the Shamrock Rovers is that they've six red cards this season and five of them have been given by Sean Grant. So there's a <laughs> they've created a conspiracy theory there. Mm. But mm. I think. Mm. Going on the 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 red cards, I think the Richie Tyle one. I said again, mm. linesman's looking straight at it. I can't. I have people have said that they've seen a kick out. Fair enough, no arguments. Mm. I think Johnny Kenny's. I can see where it's coming from, and I can see he's probably got the yellow card, second yellow card, just because of what he's done with his first. Mm. If he hadn't got a yellow card, he probably gets away mm. with just a free kick. And the Sean Hoare one, I think, I think that's completely harsh. Yeah, um, but fair, but, yeah. as you say, Cork, it, they would have been disappointed if they hadn't went on to win that game. And it was a, it was a great, a great team goal. Um, mm. they just kept the ball alive, passed it about, created the space and the ball across the box, and there's Ronan Keaton at the back post too. Whenever I saw him at the Brandwell, um, I was really impressed with him. Uh, I really was. And his work rate is really good as well. Apart from was it six goals a season, he uh, scored. Yeah, his work rate maybe seven now actually, but his work rate is brilliant. Yeah. I think, and uh, he runs the channels, and he will he will cause problems for any defense really in this yeah. league. I think. Yeah, and even when we beat Cork three one at Turner's Cross, yeah, even when we beat Cork three one at Turner's Cross, yeah. he, he looked a handful like he, he really did, and you're thinking uh, if next season he's probably going to get a, a move to maybe another team in uh, mm-hmm. in the division, like and um or Cork will be hoping they hang on them, like but. Um, I think the only way Cork were probably going to win this game was refereeing mm. decisions, influencing the game, and 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 that's what's happened. Um, no disrespect to Cork, whatever, but Cork fans probably agree with me. Um, so, yeah. but because the first, uh, you, I know you can't take much from that. Put this way, really, Cork but... City got three players sent off in the same circumstances against Shamrock Rovers. Rovers probably been four or five nil. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the difference between mm. the two squads and the, the the two sets of players. And mm. um, Rover seemed to, from a highlight trail, start the brightest, as you would imagine, bossing the ball, creating the chances. Jack Byrne being involved in the mm. majority of it, um, and then just I think Rovers imploded, um, yeah. with the help of a referee. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things, but uh. It's not a good result for Rovers. Uh, it's a great result for the league, I have to say, but we'll get into that later on. I think quickly for Cork City's point of view, I think the frustrating thing from Cork City's point of view, <laughs> they beaten Sligo at home. What's that? They've beaten Shamrock Rovers at home as well, and they haven't gained any ground, so they haven't, because Trotted and Sligo have yeah. gone out. We can talk about them later, but Trotted and Sligo have yeah. gone out to win games as well, so that's a bit frustrating. But just to touch yeah. on quickly the some of the vile... Uh, Chance from the from the stand from some Cork City fans aimed at Stephen Bradley and his family. Um, it's I hope beyond they find them it's them. beyond deplorable. And the good thing is Cork City put out a statement. In fact, Dermot Usher has come out and said it, that he will be issuing lifetime bans to the culprits because that's not on. We like a bit of banter. We love a bit of crack in the stands. Um, and there's some things you smile and laugh about, but that's just beyond. Um, I can't even like. I've no words for I'm that not- behavior. Uh, and you say we like a bit of a crack and banter, but that that just goes beyond it. And um, Steve, like I don't know Stephen Bradley. Um, we all know we all know the 
the circumstances of it of his his family life at the minute and mm. really hope that things for for young Josh is continuing to go go in the right direction and um whoever those group of people were um shame on them and uh fair play to Cork and their Russia and let's hope they find them find them that's the point uh, and yeah. find who they are and and ban them there's people out there who who will not have participated in it but would have witnessed it who will know who they are and I, I think it's all, up to people to come to, it's up to people to identify them and help out as well in that way as well in my opinion yeah yeah and hopefully yeah. they let, let's hope they do absolutely uh moving on to daily park bohemians nil shelburne nil next game uh this was a pathetic game i'm sorry <laughs> i was at the game i did a vlog but uh um, look, both defences were well on top. You have to give credit to some of the defending in the game. I thought Luke Byrne was a standing at the back for Shelburne. He was like a magnet when Bowles tried to get the ball into the box and uh, crossed it, etc. But uh, and Bowles defended quite well as well when when Shelburne were uh, trying to to attack in the game as well. The likes likes of Moylan, sorry, Matty Smith ran in the game. Afalabi, I thought was disappointing from Bowles. I thought Akin Tunde looked better when he came on. Uh, Twardek and McDade done okay, but. At the same time, didn't really create an awful lot. Um, both teams midfields they didn't really play through the middle. Therefore, Ali Koo couldn't really get into the game. Um, Shelburne looked better actually, but it was a great sign for them. Sean Boyd coming on because uh, Moylan went slightly wider at one point. I know he went off later, but uh, they looked more of a threat when Boyd came on actually late in the game. Funnily enough, but both mm. Shelburne started the better side without creating an awful lot, passed the ball better. Bowles then got into the game, did the same thing. Ali Coot did hit the bar from a free kick, to be fair. Cairns may have saved it, though. Tordic had a shot where Cairns saved, but he was at an angle where it was never going in. Um, apart from that, nothing really in the game. Bit of a disappointing Dublin derby. And on the back of, from Shadow's point of view, a disappointing Dublin derby the week before against Pats as well. Um, both of them lacked that bit of bite, yeah. if I'm honest with you. But... Um, Look, Damien Duff came out and said he's happy with the point against title contenders, Bohemians. He did well, not smiling there, but uh, <laughs> also coming back into the pack. Yeah. They're third and 30 points. Shelburne are six and 25. I have a feeling that I did say at the start of the season when Bowles were going that run, if they finished third, grab your hand. You know, they should be grabbing their hand off for third. And some Bowles fans I think are getting a bit ahead of themselves. But Pat's them, Dundalk are not too far away from them, and there's only 17, 18 games gone. Yeah, and we, and we always felt that um that that the time would come that um bows would be they they'd be reeled in they they wouldn't stay at the top of the table for for the the entire season mm. um maybe bows fans were were dreaming of a a, a Leicester City uh c- scenario um so happens and, though they're actually not too far off Rovers and Derry but I just don't think that they just don't have that quality though and, and why and why not dream like a your team gets off the flying start and you've beaten Derry and the Brandeville and then um I think they they've lost twice the Rovers hadn't they so that that's that probably where, where that's where the killer is that they've they have they have beaten Derry and the Brandeville but lost them in Damon Park. Mm-hmm. They've lost the two games they they, they Shamrock Rovers. So um mm-hmm. look for Bows you say when they're top of the table if, if you said that the most honest Bulls fan will give you third now, they would have, they would take that. Um, but you say now the gap's starting to close. They're starting to not pick up wins. Early on the season, they were they were scraping good good ones rather than maybe going and, and blitzing teams like um seen early on like the first game away to Cork, they were two 0 up and cruising, conceded a silly goal, and then they were left hanging on. I think they did over the first few games. That was a that that seemed to be the, the theme of their victories and then they started they they see out games better. Mm. But I think they're starting to they're starting to pick up a, a wee bit of their, their squad's starting to be tested now, isn't it really? Um in terms I think of I will say the one thing about them I said a few weeks ago and the difference is with them this season to be fair is that they've more there's more fight in the team. They don't give up. Like last yeah. week came, came from two down against Dundalk to get two two draw. Yeah I, last season. That's the difference. But yeah. in terms of quality there's not much of a difference yeah. between them from last yeah. year. It's more the attitude and the fight, and maybe a little bit of organisation yeah. that Devine has brought back in, maybe. Yeah, and that's one thing that I can, I can vouch for. Becky is he brought the Derry, and mm. um, he brought fighting, mm. fighting spirit to the team that, that never said they attitude. I, I think 
under his leadership, there was like his ma- when he was here, there was like three or four games that we, we played against Dundalk that we were maybe two 0 down and we came back to draw or um maybe scored an equalizer in the last minute against other teams or uh, and that's one thing. Whatever his teams lack in quality, they'll make up for and and team spirit and mm. I think that's what what he's brought goals. But mm. like that that went for Patsy all night. Um, mm. that again down to ten men beating them back closes the gap on them. And and now that they've confirmed that John Daly is going to be the new manager, um, it's a wee bit of um stability now for for mm. for the club and um, I'm sure now that they'll be looking to kick on. Um, but Damien Duff, I think, was um touching on his aftermath interview there about the uh, title yeah. contenders Bohemians. I think that was he's probably trying to get it get under the Bulls fans' skin a wee bit there because I, I like Damien. I think he brings a lot to the yeah, league. I do as well, absolutely. Brings a brings a bit of banter to to the league as well. And the way he came out after the Derry game and spoke about the officials from um, about the league is progressing and taking. It. Mm. We're taking it to the next level, and the officials have to come with us. Is was absolutely um, <laughs> mm-hmm. something that you don't you probably somebody something that you probably wouldn't have heard from from any other manager in the league. And because it is Damien Duff, people he are probably going to take it on board more. Mm-hmm. Not that he gets away with it, people are probably going to take it on board more. Yeah. Um, I think maybe Stephen Bradley was to say it. Then people would maybe come out and say, "Oh, that's Rovers wanting the the, the officials on their side or stuff like that." But I think because it's Damien Duff, I, I think uh, it it uh taken on board a wee bit more. Definitely, definitely. Um, drop the United three UCD one at uh, Weavers Park. Expect the result, and UCD they do look doomed, don't they? As opposed to last year, JP, because um last year they yeah. kind of had Finn Harps coattails to hang on to. I think Cork yeah. have a little bit more about them than Harps did last year. I said this before, but Cork are nine points above them in the league. Um, look, they yeah. started off well. They got a good goal. Wells, funnily enough, scored after 19 minutes. And they could have went two up, actually, in this game. Yeah, and straight away. An absolute disaster. They should have went two up. And then an absolute disaster before half time meant they went in 2 1 down at half time. So it's kind of like the story of their season in many ways there. But touching on them first, um, you know, it's going to be a serious Houdini act if they even finish ninth. I, I really can't see it at this stage at all. Can you? No, I, I can't. Um, as you say, like last year, they they had Van Arps to hang on to, um, and they these were the kind of games that they were probably winning last year. Um, mm. going one 0 up against Drogheda, and it was a really good goal. Um, McCabe did well to hold it up and, and lay it off. Um, for Adam Wells, just they they run on it and say he didn't even blast it. They just say put it past the goalkeeper, and then. Straight from the kickoff, it should have been two 0 Um, they hit the bar. There was a let off for Drogheda. You seen it from, from the. The Drogheda goalkeeper. Um, yeah, he was beating he, the like, game, wasn't he? All ends up there, like there's no way. He's oh, he, he had like sorry, mm. <laughs> I think I got McCabe mixed up with the, the UCD striker that laid the ball off, but um, was, I I just couldn't. Get my head around what happened. I know they were looking for the the first goal. They were looking for a free kick, which I don't think was. I think he just slipped over. Mm. And then they were looking for the offside flag. But fair play to the Freddie Draper. He just mm. went. He stuck a ball in the net and asked questions later. Yeah. And um, I think that's probably affected them because you said he just didn't regroup after that. Mm. And um, they've gone. There's in. a possibility it was offside as well, and that's that's the disappointing. Yeah. Because if if that's offside, yeah. it's a good chance to go in one 0 up at half time. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the the commentators had said that the linesman was not up with play. Um, whenever the ball was played through, so so that that's disappointing. Um, from a UCD perspective, but whenever things like that go against you, you have to just take it on the chin and 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 get on it. And unfortunately, they seem to be affected by it because mm-hmm. the the second goal was very very avoidable. Yeah, the ball goes through. The Draper and it doesn't even get it out of his feet properly. Um, it, it gets away have from that him. that much time, it's, shouldn't he? Not Draper in the box. Yeah. It the ball gets away from him. He still manages they they pull poke it past the goalkeeper and mm-hmm. it, they're two from a position of probably comfort. They're going in two one down, mm-hmm. and then 
the the, the goal from Dylan Grimes is a really good well work goal flick on at the near post and he, he gambles at the back post. You should be disappointed because they don't deal with a, a throw in and then nobody tracks a run and um they're they're just as I say these were games that they were probably winning last year or not losing and maybe keeping keeping themselves in with a shout but I think they've they've won one game all year is it yeah um and I, I, I just Cork think as well. <laughs> yeah that, that's right they're still um, nine points behind Cork you know what I mean so no, behind, and because you touched on it there Cork have the ability to pick up points and victories against the likes of Shamrock Rovers yeah. and Sligo um and 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 that's the difference really um is Cork do have that that wee bit of quality in their team UCD do as well but it's it's a different kind of mm. they they have quality individuals feels like they're and, a bit younger this year if that makes sense as yeah, well yeah definitely yeah. because they, they lost Carl Whelan Dylan uh Duffy mm. and other players even, even in the middle of last season and, and Sam Todd yeah. has been that injured which is a disaster for them by the way yeah. And there's talk that he could be leaving in the summer window as yeah. well, anyways. So, um, I, I don't, I, 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 I don't envy Andy Myler at all because oh. he's got the, oh. the most difficult job in the League of Ireland. So he does, mm. um, because he, he can never get a, a team to go, get them promoted. The job I done last year. If this team were in the first division, I think they it could possibly be mid table, like you know, the kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Um, the job that he done last year, they mm. not even just get a playoff spot, but mm. they go and beat Waterford. Who they 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 beat Waterford uh, in the playoff final for second year in a row, and and does it? And they did, and mm. um, they they keep Bemans up. What was an unbelievable job, and um, I think Waterford will be uh, looking at the league table and hoping UCD go down automatically this year. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You're right, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> from Drotter's point of view, obviously Freddie Draper's amongst the goals now. I think it's his fifth goal this season. He scored three in the last two games anyway. And uh, I did say all along he was missing chances, but at least he was occupying defenders and he was a handful and, and you know, he was performing well. And usually when that happens, the goals will follow. And they have followed. And he's a player, obviously, that Drotter will be looking to hang on to till the end of the season if they can. But also, especially with Cork now, like five points in it, if Drotter were to lose Draper and uh, the other guy that was at Lincoln, uh, Ayu, you know, mid-season, let's say, they'd be huge losses because if I'm a Drotter fan, I'm still a bit concerned about Cork in reality, you know? Yeah, yeah, because even though you picked up that one over UCD, you're still only five points above them. Um, where yeah. if you're beating UCD, you're thinking that's a chance to create a gap and maybe kick on, but then... By the way, Drotter and Cork play next week, incidentally, as well. There we go. So probably they were probably looking at that. You know, if we beat UCD, we go eight points clear, and then mm -hmm. we have a chance to open up an eleven point lead, and then all of a sudden we're no longer looking over our shoulders anymore. We we, we can lock up, and I think that's what they did. One thing they did last year was they they got that opportunity early on, and they got points on the board early on, and then over by by the halfway stage of the season, they were looking up rather than over in their over their shoulders at at Van Harps and UCD, and um. But uh, it, Freddie Draper's only eighteen as well, and whenever they lost, was it Williams? The the Bohemians. Ian Williams. They, they lost him. Yeah, they, they they lost him. So you're looking right, and I think um did Foley leave as well, or is he still there? A Foley's there, um, but he suffered a lot of injuries. Yeah, so you're looking at them two players, and you're thinking, where's our goals going to come? And, and now Draper is starting to get in and in on the act in terms of goals, and um they still got Dar Markey there as well, who who can. Who bring a, a bit of Premier Division experience to the team yeah. and yeah, um, yeah. like um, that that that's what they'll need um, like they they be playing Cork now on, on Friday night and they'll be hoping to beat them and open up that eight point gap that they felt pr they probably would have done on Friday night. So yeah, still plenty of positives um for Drogheda and I think push comes to shove over the course of the season. I think they will have a wee bit more than. Than Cork, um, they, they avoid that nine, nine spot, um, but a very good one for them. Um, it would have been a disaster for them if, if they didn't pick up, pick up a, a win in this game. Um, especially with the, with the way things turned out at Turner's Cross. 
Yeah, and um, Richmond Park and St. Patrick's Lake 2, Dundalk 1. You touched on us, John Daly is now the uh, full-time permanent manager of St. Patrick's Lake. This is his first game officially in charge. And uh, an interesting game. Obviously, Mark Doyle get the lead. Uh, he passed the lead after 30 minutes, after a good play from Mul- Mulraney. Uh, Shepard could only push it out, and Doyle was in hand to make it 1-0. Tullock equalised. He came on at half-time, I think, actually, for Dundalk. Three minutes in the second half to make it one all. Um. Then there was an altercation, let's say, whereby uh, Mulraney was sent off, deservedly so, on 53 minutes. But um, in my opinion, I'm not really sure why Conor Malley didn't go as well, because not only does he grab him in a headlock, but he incites the whole thing, doesn't he? Um, the, the scuffle, etc. So even that alone, you'd nearly think two red cards would have been a thing to do. So I'll get back to that in a minute. But uh, obviously later on, Pats um, went on to win the game with 10 men, and deservedly so as well. And it was actually Carty who scored the winner, which was lovely play from Lonergan, actually. Beautiful ball across. And Carty's on hand, gets into a good position and finds the roof of the net and gives Pats all three points. Big win for Pats because we've often accused Pats of maybe not getting the knuckling down and winning matches. But to beat Dundalk with 10 men, um, to be the team that we're pressing, by the way, um, you know, is a great result for Pats. And obviously puts them four to three points out of Dundalk, a point off Bohemians at the moment. And... You know, um, yeah, obviously a fantastic win for Pats and uh, your thoughts on the sending off and the scuffle as well. I think when I looked at it, um, I don't see how you can you can give a yellow card to one and a red to the other. Um, but I think one thing that probably went against Jake Mulraney was whenever he got separated, he went back for more. Oh um, yeah, he the right card, no doubt. He went back for more, so that's yeah. probably why he's got the red card. Where it could potentially have been the referees looking at him thinking, Right, I'm going to give it's a scuffle six of one, half a dozen the other. I'm going to give two yellow cards here. And then when Mulraney goes back for more, that's probably made his mind up and decided, Right, I'm, I'm going to send you off. But one thing is, uh, they note on it is that Michelle O'Neill was running the line on, yeah. she was down the other, uh, down the other flank, but she was on that side. So she was able. So she was. I think. She, by the time everything had boiled over, she was up and mm. she she was another pair of eyes for the 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 referee. So maybe did did she see something? Um, we don't know, but I just I don't let's say Molly got um Mulraney in a headlock, and then it just all boiled from there. So it should have been two red cards, in my opinion. Um, but I think so because I think but, it's not just that Mali has him in a headlock, which is ridiculous. It's the fact that that incites the whole thing as well. Like it, it kind of leads to a big scuffle as such. That's the way I'd see it personally. As I said, Mulraney red card, absolutely no complaints there. Red card all day. Yeah. But I personally do think Mali should have went as well. To be honest with you. Yeah, no, I totally agree there with that. Um, but for some parts, they could have they could have oh. mulled that. Then. They could have mulled that and sat down and moped, and but they didn't. They stood up and they were counted and they went on and they they got the winning goal and um. I think they totally deserved it from 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 what I saw in the the highlights. Like before they went in front, they could have had they could have been two or three up. Mm-hmm. I think Doyle just before he scored, I think mm-hmm. I don't think he hit the bar. I think a defender put it onto the bar. Um, I think it was, it was Murphy actually. Defender. It was Murphy went round the. The keeper and took a shot and the defender pulled up at the bar and then they came out and Mark Doyle has got it. But Mark oh, Doyle, that what it was? there was another chance Mark Doyle ran through yeah. and he, I think he got caught in between two minds, but crossing it for all yeah. Doyle or shooting and he kind of ended up doing nighter, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So there, there was then um, chances and then I think Nathan Shepard will be disappointed because he's made a good save. He just hasn't got enough. No. He just hasn't got enough on it, I think, because it was a cross rather than somebody shooting. The pace mm-hmm. wasn't on him from they beat it away uh, as far as they want. They, all he mm-hmm. could do was just make a save and, and Owen Doyle was there there to tap in and a, a good equaliser for, for Dundalk as well. Um they to bring yeah. him in the game and then like the the winning goal was just your typical wide man gambling at the back post, getting something on it. Same what happens, comes down off a bar and, and rolls over the line and um like a a white stone dock in the brand well the other week and was really disappointed with them. That they're mm. definitely the, the worst on dock team that mm. I've seen. Murmurs, I know a few Dundalk fans com- coming out, JP kind of having a go with O'Donnell now and stuff like that. And uh, 
I don't know where I sit in that really. I mean, they're saying the budget isn't great. It mightn't be as it was, but it's not yeah. as bad as I say either, though. It's they've not as bad. It's... Players, they've still kept Pahu and Alihi. These aren't staying if there's literally nothing at Dundalk, no yeah. money there. Exactly. Exactly. And I would say they've probably still got a bigger budget than, than what Bohemians do. I'd say um, they're f- probably fourth in the budget list. They're quite. They're probably pushing some paths for what they've yeah. got. So, yeah. Like, um, it's not a cheap budget they have. Um, it's just they're not, comparing so... to the budget they had. I think that's the problem. Had, and that's what they like have they to get have away from. They did have the biggest budget, them. you see. Yeah. They have to get away from the Stephen Kenny era, the Big yeah. Six era. They have to get away from that. They're no longer the team with the biggest budget. But um, at the same time, um, it's not. We're not talking about draw the levels here, a budget or um, no, definitely or whatever. They're still full time. They're, they're still full time players. Yeah. Um, they've got as I say, Andy Boyle still there, Pat Huben still there, Dara Leakey still there, Robbie Benson, Keith Ward. They brought these in Alfie Lewis. They, these are seasoned League of Ireland pros. Exactly, and there's no they're, way they're going to come back with a terrible. They're not so, exactly, um, so. Again, I, I do have sympathy mm. with with the fans, but whenever you saw the lineup that they put out against Derry and the Brandywell, and they had the likes of Keith Ward on the bench and Pat Huben on the bench, and you're, you're just looking yeah, at him. Martin is a decent player. He does be obviously in a yes, side as like, well. So it's you know, like they have got it, good players. Like they do, they're, not, yeah. they're just not the Dundalk that they were, but they're not. They're not as bad. As, and maybe that yes. comes back to a a little bit as well. Could he be doing better? It's hard to know. I think you I need think to so. know need the season to know. I, I think I think so. I think they I think they're they're suffering from overachieving last year. Possibly, I think they're suffering yeah. from that. Yeah. I think they're suffering. If they finished maybe fifth or sixth well, last year. I actually think and, to be honest, JP, I think O'Donnell no. over I think O'Donnell overachieved a little bit in that season there with Pats where they won the cup and finished second. Yeah. And I think yeah. if he was there yeah. the next season they would have went down a little bit as well. So I think that's coming yeah. that season with Dundalk now. But they could still finish third, technically. This is the thing. Yeah. Absolutely. They just, they just need to they stick together as a group, as players, fans, whatever. Just have to stick together and, and get through the, this difficult spell because every team goes through it in, mm. in a season. Mm. And, and this is potentially Dundalk. And they have to stick Exactly, they they have to stick because they're they're only three points behind some pats who, yeah, uh, yeah, there's three points behind some pats and four four, four behind goals. goals, so so it's not, uh, not uh, there's still loads there to play for them. Like maybe they overachieved last year. Maybe did they finish fifth or sixth last year? Maybe would they the fans be of acceptance of of where they are mm. at this moment in time in the league? Uh, JP, yeah. Tom Gravosti went off injured for Pats in that game and he was obviously out for a long time but he's actually out till the end of the season likely now as well from what I'm hearing. Um, that's a big loss yeah. for him and I suppose for Pats, particularly with Joe Redmond out. Um, they probably lose a bit of something there but it's bad for Tom Gravosti himself because he was uh, when he was at rate, I think it was rate he was at when he got a terrible injury as well so um, it's not great for him I suppose really, is it? <laughs> no, it's, it's not great like in... Um... Wish him all the best in his recovery, and hopefully he can he can come back, um, refreshed for for next season. But for Pats, it's a huge loss, like because they they've lost their two two of their their key central defenders. Like I'm not sure how long Redmond's out, but um, uh, One for two, and I'm sure. Four, yeah, so so it's, it's not ideal. It's preparation, especially going into the, the the Europe. Um, mm. they're probably going to have to to get the. Go around, uh, uh, identify one if not two centre backs that they can bring in early in the window and and get them up to scratch for 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 the Europa Conference League, um, because it is an opportunity for uh, for for Pats like the the, the Conference League, um, so they they maybe get three around and it's not ideal if you're going to be without them but at the same time you're 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 looking you want to be back in it next year as well even if you do mm-hmm. go out early on so um yeah a huge loss for Pats and hopefully it takes a time and and does all the the rehabilitation stuff and it can get back in time for the start of next season. Yeah, on Saturday then if you slug your Rovers one Derry City nil and uh, you must be scratching your head at this one JP because first of all like the goal is after five minutes it's 
some places yeah. said it's with Will Fitzgerald's and McJanet OG. Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it does take a deflection. It doesn't really matter, I suppose, you know, that kind of way. I suppose the goal from Derry's point of view, they were disappointed with, particularly with Ben Doherty, maybe, because he just lets Levac. It's not as if Levac, he's a good player, but he's not the fastest of players. You know what I mean? And he just lets him well, walk by him and get across into the box. They don't deal with yeah. it. I know that, but it's a capitulation. But for me, I don't know about you, you've seen all the Derry games live, more or less, like, you know what I mean? It looks like this could have been Derry's worst performance of the season. Would you agree with that? Well, I haven't seen I haven't seen the, the game from start to finish. I've just seen the highlights and for, from what I'm reading from comments from, from fans and stuff, it was a really poor lackluster performance. Um, there was no real chances created by them in the game no, at all. I know um, Sligo I'll talk about Sligo properly in a minute, but they're, they're such a strange team. They really are. <laughs> even when they uh Slag went down to ten men, people were saying Derry didn't didn't create anything, Sligo created more. Mm. Um, the goal I was disappointed with. Um, I watched it a few times. Um, I think you say Ben Doherty lets him go past them. I think instead of just continuing to run, Pushing he tries to stick a leg out. He tries yeah. to stick a leg out. And, um, instead of just maybe say Ben Doherty's run. quicker than him in a race, though. What's the yeah. funny thing? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And maybe just just run back with him, start the cross, getting in. But once the ball goes in the box, they have to deal with it better. I think it's Shane Magalini. Gets his head on it, but can't quite clear it. And then um, Fitzgerald gets a shot away and just hits McJanet and bobbles over the top of Maher. And it's, it's just one of them goals. Yeah, that, really all around, I suppose, really. Yeah. Um, you, you're just trying to look at it and see, is he square on? Is he? Mm. It's just, but in saying that, there was, was 85 minutes left in the game. There was a l- lot of time to get back into it. Um, you've a chance to open up a, a four point gap in Sean Grovers, and they've given Derry a lot of chances this year to do that, and, and Derry haven't taken the advantage. Um, but look, halfway over for Derry and Sean Grovers, there's more, there's they're over the halfway stage now of the season, so the, the Derry and Rovers will want to put the, them defeats behind them and, and go again next week and really build a bit of momentum now over the next three, four weeks. and Take us in the, the June where take us in the, the June break and then not be long after that then they'll they'll be preparing for the Europa Conference League so, uh, Rovers for the Champions League. So mm. um I think this is where the, the 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 title race will start now between uh, I think it's safe to say that it is gonna be now a two two horse mm. race. Um I think this is where it's gonna start now. That both teams will look to build momentum. Go as I say, going into the the, the European European window and um, look for Derry when Derry lost the Rovers two weeks ago I think they were six points three weeks ago I think they were six points behind them Um, they're now a point in front of them Um, after going on a, a four match winning streak unfortunately they couldn't make it five but look mm-hmm. running runs have to come to an end some days Slago were they were probably the worst opponent for Derry to come up against because they were going into the game on three three defeats in a row I think it was going into that game for Sligo. Um so they're so, yeah. probably the worst they're probably the worst opponent for Derry because they were coming up yeah, against the Wounded Animal. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought mean, just Sligo are such a funny fair team. Sligo. Yeah, fair play to Sligo. You no, know, you're right. I think they're such a funny team. They're the weirdest team in the league in my opinion, because uh, you see them sometimes and they look like the worst team in the league. And you see them other times and they can put it up to teams. I just wonder with Derry, did they flop with me the word, but the fact that Rovers lost the day before, mm. you know, did that affect yeah. them mentally on their little bit as well? And, uh, you know, well, they never got going. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if the, the games were played at the same time, maybe it mm. would have been a different result. But as you say, Derry had nearly 24 hours. They, yeah. they, pre- they prepare or on the back of their mind that Rovers had, wa- had lost the game and, but look, we've players like Patrick McLennie and Michael Duffy in the team that that have been in this position before that mm-hmm. that that all said, look, it's it, it's the other probably players that you're probably looking at. Maybe look, did that affect them? I, I wouldn't say so, but yeah. But Higgins came out afterwards and and said it was our, our worst performance. Like, and this was a Derry team that was going in this game on beating away from home mm-hmm. at, at this point in the season. So. 
that that makes it even more disappointing. Um, but look, it is what it is. You take it on the chin, and you go again on Friday night against Shelburne and try and start another uh winning streak. Um, because Shelburne's going to be a difficult game at the brand, even though it's at the Brandeville, they're going to make it difficult for us. Um, I just feel, but yeah, been... I just feel with uh with Sligo there. Sorry, is that um I feel like I'm always repeating myself with them when they expect them to lose comfortably, they don't, and when you expect them to kind of yeah. win, they don't. So they're, I mean, yeah. if you're doing any betting slips, don't throw Sligo on any accumulators. That's all yeah. I'd say. There, you just look their fixtures there. They, they, um, and then five games, either side of three defeats, was a a one away at Pats, and a one at home to Derry. So that that's how. And then in between it was defeats the Corks, uh, mm. Shelburne and Dundalk. So, but look, mm. talking about refereeing decisions. Um, yeah. What's that? Talking about refereeing decisions and yeah, the John uh, Mahan one. John Mahan one, yes. Um, now let's not forget he should have been sent off in the Brandeville for two yellow cards. <laughs> um, I thought it was harsh. Um, I think the, the second two of them yellow. Them back. It, it's a foul. So it is I never foul, take... in my opinion. But yeah, do you have to give a yellow card no. for that, like? No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't even think it's a foul to be honest. Do you? No, no. He does kind of grab him. He does kind of grab him and shove him on the ground a bit. So I can see why a well, foul might be given. But a yellow card is just like no way. I think it's because John Mahan has the ball. John Mahan has the ball and great. Mm-hmm. He's tracking him. So mm-hmm. I, was saying, I don't think Graydon is fouling. But yeah, um, mm-hmm. I was a. But I'm saying that I've seen a tackle from Saturday Diallo and I think. Yeah, I think he's a very lucky person. Um, I yeah. think he's a very lucky person. Um, yeah. But it, yeah. Because, in my opinion, mm. of some of the red cards that we've seen this weekend, that was probably the most nailed on red card, to be honest given. with you. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't given as right. Um, look, fair play to Sligo. They, they yeah. got the win and yeah. fully deserved it. And maybe the, the result from Drogheda and Cork the night before spurred demons on a wee bit more as well. Because it is a big result were, for them because they were getting dragged into that little... Yeah, they were only four points. And I'm not saying they're out of it necessarily, but you know what I mean? Like, they were really kind of... You're kind of looking at them going, Jesus, are these in the mix here? They were only four points above uh, Cork and into that behind game. Behind so They yeah. were behind Drogheda, so it was a big result for them. Mm. Um, so, yeah, fair play to them. Mm. Yeah, matches on Friday night. We'll give our predictions. They're all on Friday night this week as well. Uh, you've got Bohemians at home to Sligo. <laughs> Try to predict the Sligo game and we forget about it, JP. Uh, um, Bose, Whatever I say, it'll be the opposite, though. So, <laughs> Bose, a team that have started really well. Um, the wheels have come off a wee bit in the, the last few weeks, but that's something that we expected. <clears throat> Sligo, I say, a team that had lost three in a row and then they played Derry. Now, now got a victory. Can they recreate that performance away at Daily Mount Park? Be hard to know. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go one 0 Bohemians. I'm sitting on the fence. One 0 uh, Derry City and Shelburne at the Brandywell, and we know that Derry City have uh, had awkward games, haven't they, against Shelburne at the Brandywell? Um, yeah. Shells, as I said before, they're well. What you will get from the generally is well organized machine, very fit. They're going to go to Derry and they're going to say to Derry, break us down if you can. And it'll yeah. be a, a case of, uh, will Derry keep their heads or not? You know what I mean? And Shelburne looked yeah. to him the counter. We just see if Sean Boyd starts. I suspect he won't quite be ready to start yet, but uh, Derry need a reaction yeah. here, obviously, as well. They do, and and that's where um you could f- fear for Shelburne um, that Derry could come out early and, and get an early goal. But um, I think... Talking about Sean Boyd there, Mark Connolly was back on the bench last night as well um, for Derry. Um, so uh, potentially mm-hmm. is this a game that, that, that he could start? Um, mm-hmm. Don't know, Um, but uh, it's good they have him back. Patrick McLennan came off the bench last night. Rory Higgins was probably not wanting to use was hoping that he may not have had to use him, but he, he did and unfortunately couldn't couldn't get his oh, something right. out of the game, but it's good they have Patrick back as well. Um, It's, it's actually good because the, the Dummick is back the last few weeks, so the injury list is starting to come down a wee bit. Um, I know we we're, we're still waiting on word and Colin Whelan's injury. Um, because apparently scan two or three scans has has showed up that it's inconclusive. They don't know they, they don't know what what's going on there. So mm. good they have Conley back for that game. Uh, for for Shelburne. Um, 
could say they will make it difficult. They'll say to Derry, come and break us down. And uh, uh, like, what formation lineup do Derry go with? Because they've been testing a, a false nine, etc. in the, the last few weeks, and they've been playing Kavanagh and McGonagall. So it's, it's going to be interesting. But I think Derry will, will win this. And like, apart from the cup final, mm. all the games in the league under, Shel- uh, under Damien Duff against Shelburne. I think I've been decided by by one goal. Um, I think there's a draw in there as well. So I'm mm. going to go one 0 Derry. Yeah, I think it'd be tight as well. But since Shelburne might score, though, I'll go two one Derry. Uh, arguably the game of the week. I think it is the game of the week. Position the table that has dropped United in Cork. Both teams have gone into with a lot of confidence actually, and uh, it's just big because I mean, if draw a win, I mean, they're eight points out of Cork. If Cork win, there's two points in it. It's a massive game. Yeah. If it's a draw, obviously we're we're still where we are, but. Uh, It'd be interesting to see how uh, draw the, uh, both teams approach this game, to be honest, because uh, like, did our car copy with the draw if they get a draw? You know, that kind of way? Um, did I think... I think so. Yeah, I think, I think so it's as well. And then draw, they'd probably be content with a draw as well, to a sense. So we might see... This might lead to a, actually a, a cautious cagey game, actually. I think it's a game that neither will want to lose, Keith. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's one of them games that you, you both teams will take a draw, but Obviously, they, they will go and try and win. As you mm. say, like, draw have the incentive of opening up an eight-point gap. Cork have a chance to close the two. But, uh, as I say, both teams will, will not want to lose it because for them very reasons, um, that you are going to be eight points behind or, or two points in front and, and you want to maintain at least that five-point gap. Um, So, <clears throat> or, sorry, at the very most for Cork point of view, is that you want it to stay at five points. They don't want it to go to eight, and draw it a bit similar. They don't want it coming down to two. So, yeah, um, I think it'll be KG, but I think draw it. I think draw it. Win this game two one. Mm, I'm sitting on the fence in this one as well. I think it'll be one I'll draw. Sean McRovers and Dundalk at Palace Stadium. I'll see Rovers. We have a few suspensions for this one. Luckily, they have a very good squad though. <laughs> um, you know, Dundalk will hope hope for a reaction after that defeat to Pats, and it's a big game for them as well. But. Hard to see Rovers losing three at the bounce on the bounce, and I have said their way form though this season has been better in their home form, which is very interesting for Shamrock Rovers. But um, yeah, because they've lost two at home already this year, and they lost, they went unbeaten last year. That's right, like yeah, and uh, even some of the draws at home and that, but uh, I think and some of their they wins are more work. impressive on the road as well. Like won two 0 and Pat's they... four 0 at Oriel, um, for example, like you know that kind of way. So. They've had some big win, Bowles winning in Daily Men 2 0, which is never easy for Rovers to go to Daily Men to win, win 2 0 against Bowles or whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, ugh, I think I think Shamrock Rovers might bounce back and get a win here, which won't be a good result for Dundalk, particularly with Pats maybe playing UCD. But I think Rovers might make yeah. this one, right? Yeah, I, I, I find it hard to, to see where Dundalk are going to get a, a victory out of this game. Mm. They, they might maybe script a a draw at the at the very most, but it'll be take one of them. They, they will take a draw, but it, I think it'll be one of them where there'll be uh heart uh bodies on the line. Um, kind kind of draws where Rovers are maybe throwing the kitchen sink at them and <clears> stuff like <throat> that. But said, Rovers are going to end up without Sean Hoare, Johnny Kenny, and, and Richie Toyo. But mm. the thing is, <laughs> as you say, puts on it there. They've got a squad where early in the season when they had them suspensions, it was on the one area. Yeah. So talk them a wee while they're going. We're here. Mm. Like Sean Hoare's out. They've got some that can come and play there. Richie Toyle, they've got some that can come and play in midfield, replace Richie. Johnny Kenny suspended. They've still got Rory Gaffney and, and Aaron Green. So, like, I just don't see the, the, the suspensions effect and Rovers away at the start of the season. And I think the, uh, Dundalk came to Brandwell and lost 3 0. I think it's going to be a similar kind of scoreline in Tala. Yeah, I'll go two 0 Shamrock Rovers. So finally, UCD take on Pats at Belfield, and it's it's come to the stage. No disrespect to UCD, but it has come to the stage where when you play UCD and you see all these other fixers like Dundalk go to Rovers and all, where you feel like just we have to win this game. There's not we must win this game. Like you know what I mean. So Pats will feel like they must win this game, but it's difficult to see them not winning the game, isn't it? You would think it is. Like as you said, that it was we touched on earlier. The only one they've got all years uh, against Cork. Um, mm-hmm. and, they, and they've only had three draws in the 17 matches as well. And you're looking at 
<clears throat> whenever as you say you, you every time you, a team seems to play UCD, there's always a team around you playing another team that you're thinking, right, well they're definitely going to win that game. Yeah. So so this is where we have to pick it up. Mm -hmm. This is where we have to pick up a win and um the performance on Friday night against Dundalk and the way they, they came back from ten men down to ten men that they, they won the game two one. I think we'll please John Daly and he, he'll want the same application in this game against UCD. I, and I don't see it being anything other than a Pats one. I'm going to go 2-0 somewhere. Yeah, I got 2 nails as well. And Lonergan will come on as a sub and score against his former club. Look, lads, <laughs> lads, leave it there. Let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know what you think of uh, all the refereeing decisions over the weekend. I'm sure there'll be a bit of debate down there, one or two disagreements as well. Let us know your predictions for next Friday. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers, JP. Thanks a million. Cheers, Keith.